Yeah. And this kind of goes back to so uh, Shayla Johnson, uh, you know, she came through. She's saying sometimes it feels like all the good leads get snatched up before I even start. Um, but I guess there there's not there are enough deals out there for all of us. One hundred percent true that there are enough deals for all of us, and don't feel like they get snatched up. I the worst thing you can do is feel like you're losing on the deal and up your price and then you can it stales and you can you can't sell yeah. it stick to your numbers yeah because sure. yeah. you get a reputation of sending out your deals that are too high people won't even look yep. at your deals every time i've gone out of my formula and i can pretty much guarantee like every almost every single time i've gone out of my formula and like Oh, well, maybe I can push it out there and get a little bit more, you know, okay. And, and just, just to get the contract, it's backfired. Right. Yeah. It's always backfired. Yeah. So, um, 100%, I recommend you do that. I, uh, you know, just stick to your numbers no matter what. And if what will happen is, is they will, if they don't sell to you, they'll, it'll come back around. You know, and if it doesn't, there's always another deal, you know, so. Yep, for sure. Um, and then, oh yeah, uh, Kevin <laughs> Kevin kind of replied to that and said, the deals get snatched up by people who fo consistently follow up. Right. That is right. The money right. is in the follow up. I will tell you that right now. Just keep following up. Yep. So um, if you're not embarrassed with your your offer is low enough. Uh, it, or if you're not embarrassed by your offer, it was not low enough. Yeah, that, for sure. That's Terry who said that. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> you have to be careful with that too, because you like yep. to lose that seller if you really jam them up. And sometimes I do that on purpose. Yeah. Because you just don't know, you know. And if it's a house I want anyway, you know, because of some reason, I'd, I'd rather get them to say no than me say no for the most part. Um, but I'm not opposed to, I just said no to a guy that's got a piece of property on the water on Cass Lake that I just told him, I said, I'm not your best buyer and I'm not even your best listing agent because I don't, I don't work that kind of, you know, seller. Right. Or, or I'm sorry, buyer. Um, so. And, and I even tell, I even tell the sellers that, Hey, sometimes I may not be your best buyer for this. Why? Hey, why are you not putting this on the market? Right. You know, yeah. um, well, you, you called me out of the blue. That's usually all I get. Right. It's, yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's fair enough. I, I understand. But you know, um, if you want that price, you're probably going to have to list down the market and it's probably going to go there. Um, I'm going to have to stick to my price because I got costs associated with everything that I do. And you know, the market's only going down at this moment. You know, and of course, that works to your advantage too, right? If that guy, you know, just gets the deal because he overbid it over yours, yep. Then it doesn't close. Who guess? Who, who do you think you're calling? Exactly. You're calling the next guy in line, or yeah. that, that they thought that's credible to now actually close it because they wasted thirty days. And, and you know what? And that brings to another point: is is when you do that, you stick to your numbers, you stick to what you say you're doing. You tell them, this is the key you give evidence of why you're lowballing that offer because right. this property this property this property sold down the street i'm gonna have to put x amount of dollars into yours in order to get it up there i'm gonna have to feed my family i'm right. gonna have to do all that um you know so when you do that now to that buy to that seller you've just become a credible person yeah yep. you know you need to you need to frame your responses to them, you know, using that word term lowball, just yeah. like, just gives me the cringes, you know, like, yeah, that's a bad word. Yeah, yeah. no, you don't ever want to use the term you lowball. I'm you, looking you, for a discount. How much of yeah, a discount? discount. There you go. This or that, right? Um, so, and somebody that from like negotiating standpoint, a guy named Chris Voss, who wrote a book called Never Split the Difference, you read that book and, it plays on the psychology of what a what a seller thinks or yes. you know he he was a an expert uh hostage negotiator 
Hence the point, never split the difference, because he couldn't split the difference when he was trying to save somebody's life. And right. I mean, I to this day, I listen to a couple of you know, YouTube videos every week, and I just learned something from him on how to label it, he calls it. Yep. Or, you know, seems like you're irate. <laughs> right? That seems like helps. It kind of frames it a little different for you to their to their mind. Yeah. 100 percent and i will say another uh another wholesaler in the area that is really into the the whole psychology is and he was actually on the panel <laughs> at the meetup which is um philip blake oh yeah he is i've had him on the channel i'm gonna have him back on the channel as well since we renamed it um but he is all about the psychology yeah. Of, uh, of all of it so yeah you know. it's not about it's not always about the price no you know and if you're not like fixated on the price you know the cash hammer as i like to call it you know get away from that it's not you know i generally walk through a house and get to it and say okay so what kind of number were you thinking right and just let them talk a little bit and then kind of maneuver through that sometimes well that's why i called you you know you're a crazy target price checker kind of person right right you know so usually i give them a couple more shots at giving up the number before i just give it up and of course i i lowball it in a sense yeah anchor it down so we can come up right that's the whole point um and usually those kind of people they usually you don't get to the middle of them anyway you know when they're really harsh on or really harsh on like giving them a number yep usually it's because their pain point isn't isn't hard enough yet in regards to that or they're just when you're cold calling, you get a lot of those guys. Well, give me five hundred thousand, I'll sell it to you, right? And of course, the houses were two. Um, right. They always say that to you, especially with texting. I get get that back so many times, and uh, so you just have to you have to have the thick skin with that. And yeah, I said like before, I always, get in the door with them. Yeah, talk with them is bet is the experience you need to do at the beginning. Yep. Because sometimes they say yes, even though they'll tell you they want 500 and you get there and you're saying, well, it looks more like it feels more like a 250 to me. They'll say, yeah, I was kind of thinking more like three anyway. Right. Then you just all of a sudden you think, well, what, what the heck? <laughs> like, yeah, but you told me five, right? So you didn't, if you hadn't gone yep. to it, you wouldn't have known, you know, you wouldn't have known. Exactly. And that, and that's the thing, like if you're a new wholesaler, uh, you need to you need to get the experience of, of talking with them, going to the appointments. If, if you're on the phone with them, that's great. You know, get that experience, but also be in person. You know, you can only get so far of being with being on the phone with somebody. There's a lot of these virtual wholesalers who, who do this full time, virtually and all over the phone. And that's great, but you know, in my opinion, you need to be face to face. Yeah. You know, you'll get, more, you'll get better deals and close more. Exactly. If you're standing in front of them, you know, I think, and of course the virtuals, those, those, their technique is, is only set up just to get contracts. Right. But, and I, I hope that most of them tell them that's the seller, that's what they're doing. You know, cause sometimes I get, cause I get those virtual guys that call me all the time. Yep. Uh, you know, they're from yeah, Arizona or someplace not in Michigan. They yep. Google and find me and they, they call up and say, do you like co-wholesale? So I, I always know that's what it is when I get that and get that question. Yeah. I, well, of course I do. You got it under contract? Well, I'm just kind of shopping it. Well, then call me back when you have the contract. Yep. Um, I have one call me today from in town. She's from Michigan and she has this house and she do you want to know if I co-host sale? I said, yeah, send me that. You got it under contract? Yes. I said, well, send me the details and sent me four photos and no price. Like I'm thinking, did you, I don't understand. <laughs> how am I going to buy it from you if I don't know how much the price is? That's a big thing with the four photos. Like, yeah, yeah you should be having the price, but at least I, I, I hate, I hate it when they have like, two photos or four photos and they expect they expect you to be able to sell the property on that not to mention that they got those photos from the seller yeah right? 
they didn't do it themselves. They got yeah. it from the seller. And they didn't want, you know, so tell the seller to take a photo of the front of the house. Just give me a front house. Like the one I got right. today, all interior stuff. Like I had to look it up on Google to figure out what it looked like. <laughs> yeah. So Kevin uh, actually at, uh, asked, uh, Ron, how do, how do you decide whether you go on the appointment versus offer over the phone? Well, while I'm on the phone with them, listening to them, I just do a quick, I do a quick value search. Generally, I use Zillow. It's easy, it's quick, it's usually close these days because Zillow's numbers are, their system has a lot of historical data now, which is how their algorithm works in regards to getting numbers. Yep. And, you know, in a lot of ways, because I've done so much business, I kind of can, I can kind of tell Zillow's like all wet. But even even Zillow's sold data comes off our MLS. Right. So, so if it's close and, and around the, the property, then you can get a ballpark and then you kind of gauge their, you know, their price checker system, right? Are they just yeah. price checking? Um, or are they really serious about possibly selling their house? And you got to, I, I don't think there's a true hard answer to that question. It's more being able to smell it, meaning you yeah. just know and understand their motivation. You know, usually like somebody says, I'm coming into town, my mom, dad passed away. I'll be there for three days and I'm, I'm gonna have four people come through the house. Do you wanna come? And they'll, and they'll usually say, I'm having an open house, right? So I, I'll go to the open house, you just can't hurt. And usually I go at the end so that everybody else has been first because they're not gonna sign a contract as much as you're hard at them at the beginning. They're not going to sign it. So going in last as much as you can is always the best bet. In my opinion. You don't want to be the first guy in the door because they'll never sign with you if they got three other appointments. They just won't. Um, so. That is true. Yeah, it's they, they won't sign the first one because they'll, you know, so if they say that they're having an open house, yeah, come. And, come and if, right. And if you say, something to the effect that when I walk out the door, the offer is not valid anymore. They're not calling you because that's, right. that's a pressure tactic that car salesmen use. You know, you get bombarded all day long with that kind of stuff on the radio and television. Yep. You know, just, just don't do it. If, if your number's right, you just wait it out. That's yeah. So usually what I, how I respond to that is I say, Hey, my offer is good for a little while. I'm just letting you know the market's changing. Yeah, for sure. Every every month, every week. So you know, if you call me back, I'm I may have to. If it's a some time difference, I'm gonna have to rerun the numbers. But for the most part, I, I'll try to stay around the same area. So yep. um, just keep in mind this market's going down, and you don't want to catch a falling knife. And you need to be you need to use that as your advantage yeah about the market falling like if you wait a couple more and, and, and that's and that's an honest response yeah not like you're making it up exactly like, hey you know 60 days from now i may have to reevaluate that number you know if you're really serious about selling it today at, at this number then we need to do this now because as a wholesaler you're looking about velocity anyway right yep. if you contract today you're just gonna hopefully sell it tomorrow that's what you're that's the point of what you do yeah yeah so you know unlike a rehabber which is why you have to in a falling market like we have now you need to build in that extra little piece for the rehab guy because he's the one the guy you're selling it to he's yep. the one that's gonna have to be out 90 days 120 days and he's worried which is why a lot of the rehabbers are hunkered down a lot of mm -hmm. the guys that buy a lot of houses now they're just finishing up their inventory because yeah because they don't want to buy at them. Yeah, there's a lot of them right now that if they do buy uh, flips, they need them at a severe discount. Right. Um, so a lot of people are buying right now are, are buying holds where they want to add that value so that they have that extra equity, but they're going to need a still a, a decent discount, you know? And of course, you, you've got the one-off guys too that yeah. well, they just need to keep their crews busy. You know, those are the best ones because they'll pay more. Exactly. Because they just want to keep their crews moving and they'll make 15000 instead of thirty. you know. So, which, you know, I just do this like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry I couldn't get it cheap enough for you. Right. 